let's bring in Miata Fanbula, who is Chief Executive at the New Economics Foundation for our business bulletin this morning. Miata, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. And we must start with top shop owner Arcadia going into administration. 13,000 jobs uh, now at risk. And um, I mean, this is a huge uh, casualty of the pandemic, really, isn't it? It is. And I think, you know, for many people who will know the big high street brands like Top Shop, uh, Dorothy Perkins, this will feel um, like quite a big uh, change. And I mean, in part, it's clearly the impact of the pandemic and the fact that uh, the big retail giant has struggled uh, with its shops having to be closed down um, and also a slump in demand. Um, so sales, for example, have fallen um, by about 1.8 billion this year. But it's really important to say that this is only accelerating to the trend that was already happening um, as uh, they've struggled to cope with online retail. So, you know, the debts were already accumulating and then in the context of the pandemic, this has been the nail uh, in the coffin. Mm. It's really interesting to consider, I suppose, the repercussions and the, I guess, the potential rescue of this. One analysis I read kind of turned to... Um, the likes of Boohoo and ASOS, for example, big online retailers particularly, who may be tempted by the brands, as you say, they're quite household brands, but actually it's this idea of taking on physical stores that is a real turn-off for, for any potential rescues. Is that, is that fair, do you think, as an, as an analysis? I think it is, uh, because I think the, the brands uh, sell well. If you could convert them online um, on a big scale, I think uh, you could probably keep up uh, sales. I think the qu big question is the group owns... 44 stores in the UK and 22 stores abroad. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the plight uh, for physical shops is when a lot of sales have moved online. And actually what the pandemic has done is even those people who were shy about shopping online are now very au fait with it because they've had to. Um, it's accelerated the move to online trading uh, and shopping. So uh, if you're an online retailer that's thinking about buying the brand, why would you take on the stores? Yeah. And that is the plight of our high streets. And so what does all of this mean then for the 13,000 employees who, are, you know, have got this news yesterday and they're on up to Christmas and, you know, anxious times for them? Well, I mean, it is an anxious time and, you know, they are at risk, uh, like many other jobs uh, that are at risk, uh, you know. The Arcadia have said that there are no plans for redundancies at the moment. Um, uh, so I think, you know, they'll sort of see where they go uh, going into the Christmas period. But, but moving beyond that, uh, there is a big challenge uh, for what happens with those jobs if you can't find a buyer that will take on those stores. Um, you know, some will be saved because you can convert some uh, to kind of managing retail um, online. But a lot of those jobs will be at risk. Uh, and worth mentioning, just while we're chatting retail as well, at Debenhams uh, is... Uh... Uh, well, we've got an uncertain future uh, as JD Sports is expected to pull out of talks over a rescue deal for Debenhams. Is this kind of similar, uh, similar problems that Debenhams is having? Yes, it is. So another big high street name um, at risk. And uh, JD Sports were in talks. Um, the, the big issue, so they pu pulled out these talks for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons was obviously the collapse of Arcadia, uh, which is the biggest concession operator within Debenhams. Um, now, Debenhams have already cut 6,500 jobs. Um, they've got another 12,000 jobs uh, that could now be at risk. Um, and uh, so, so again, you know, the, the big challenge is uh, can a buyer uh, come in? Can the court talks continue? Or do we see the collapse um, and of another one of our big retail giants? Mm. Uh, elsewhere this morning, let's have a little look at uh, this report from the Times today uh, that the FTSE 100, uh, the November was the best month for the FTSE 100 in more than 30 years. Um, what does that mean to you and I? What, what effect does that have on us and on the economy at large? Yeah, so a tale of, a tale of two halves, um, a really buoyant um, FTSE. Now, what that suggests is that the, the markets are having confidence um, in some of the uh, traditional companies. Uh, the thing that has driven this in particular has been the announcement of uh, the three vaccines, mm. um, which has essentially seen consumer um, investor confidence rallying. Uh, so investors have investors pretty much avoided um, buying equity equities and firms because they thought it was too risky. I think with the prospect now that people feel that perhaps the pandemic is coming at an end, 
confidence is returning. This in theory should signal good news for the economy. It should be suggesting that actually there's a sense that we're through the worst of it. But a note of caution, uh, because the worry is that the markets are being too bullish. And actually the thing that we're about to see is the kind of the economic impacts of the pandemic, uh, rising unemployment, the squeeze in living standards, which we'll see going into next year. And that may well have an impact on the markets. I, I noticed, noted as well from the Times reporting that Bitcoin rallied to an all-time high yesterday yesterday, which caught me off guard because I thought we'd heard the end, you know, Bitcoin sort of popped up a few years ago and then I thought it disappeared. The kind of the craze died down, but clearly it's still a massive thing, the digital currency, of course. It, it is a massive thing. And I think one of the another interesting trend over the course of the pandemic is that you've seen um, a shift away from using money. Yeah. Uh, so the kind of digital currencies, I think, are gaining greater currency, excuse the pun, um, and, and markets are sort of rallying in their favour. So I think that is another trend that we are seeing that was already happening before the pandemic. But once again, the pandemic accelerated the trend. Yeah, of course. And speaking of which, uh, this other story this morning, mortgage approvals uh, rose at their fastest rate in more than 13 years in October as the housing market powers on. Um, so yeah, more records tumbling all around us. But is this a bit of an artificial boost, do you think, at this point? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, home purchases jumped by 97,500 in October alone. Uh, that's 33% higher than in March 2022. So there's been a really uh, big uh, boost in the housing market, which has had an impact on uh, the mortgage market. Now, the question is, what's driving this? It's in part uh, low interest rates. Um, it's in part the fact that actually during that lockdown, what you saw is that a lot of people who would have bought homes didn't buy homes. And if you had a lot of pent up demand that's been basically released. And then, of course, uh, the government's uh, stamp duty holiday, uh, which was used to kind of stoke up the housing market, has also had an impact. I think the two questions are, uh, you know, when we move into next year, and again, the, the harsh economic reality, unemployment, squeeze in living standards starts to bite, will the bounce that we've seen in the housing market hold? I think a lot of experts suggest that the boom we're seeing is short term and artificial um, and we're likely to see a reversion if not a slump going into next year.